Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. A big thanks to all of you who have helped us to reach 54,000 subs so fast. And the support that we see down in the comments really means the world to us. It's absolutely unbelievable. Remember, we will give away a free Nintendo Switch game each and every month to the subscriber and patron most active on the channel. So if you enjoy the content, then consider subscribing and clicking that silly little bell. Cat Quest 2 from the Gentle Bros and published by the awesome P-Cube is simplicity done right. You might not have played the previous title and in all honesty, it doesn't really matter. Everything about the game smacks of accessibility, but not at the cost of experience. Whether you're a dog or cat person, well, it doesn't really matter this time around, be both. But is this one just a tad too simple? Let's find out. The age-old conflict between the cats of Felingrad and dogs of Lupus still rages on, and as you re-enter this world to reclaim the thrones for yourselves. What's different this time around though, you'll be teaming up with your age-old enemy for the greater good, taking on the role of both cat and dog. The on-screen dialogue is both quirky and suitably over the top. These are old-school bad guys who walk openly into your traps and then yell, Get me out of here! while you're told to run by your slightly dim-witted feline royal advisor. Doing almost as good a job as the villains are the dim-witted sidekicks thrown in for good measure. It's certainly not Shakespeare, but story is delivered in a fitting and engagingly swift manner. One of the nicest ways to play Cat Quest 2 is with a friend. This takes place from a top-down, semi-isometric viewpoint and controlling your cat or dog, quick switchable on the fly with a button push in single player, is easy. Left stick to move and you'll be rolling, slashing and casting magical spells. The co-op mechanic works well in single or with a friend, although I felt they could have created more gameplay scenarios that relied on particular characters to, maybe if not progress, then perhaps more easily tackle different scenarios or enemies. As it was, there was none of that. I found I ended up just decking one character out more than the other when I played in single player, which wasn't necessarily a problem per se, but perhaps more of a missed opportunity. Combat is pretty straightforward, with a simple ARPG style one button main attack. Enemies will come in a few different shapes and sizes, but tend to follow a similar signature pattern, i.e. when you see a red ring you better roll away. You'll be rolling in and out, slashing a few times, maybe firing off your magical ability before dodging back out again. Damage stats are shown on screen as numbers, which the ARPG nerd in me enjoyed a lot, but in the heat of battle, it can be a touch tricky to track your own health this way. It kind of goes without saying that questing is kind of a big part in uh, Cat Quest. These come in two flavours. Main and side, the givers of said quests present them in quite a straightforward way, with a star rating accompanying these as well. This gives a pretty good indication of if you're ready, but I found I was able to tackle some that were supposedly way above the recommended level. This in part due to the different weapons and armor you can pick up in the game, usually awarded through the off the beaten path side quests. Swords, axes, sabers and ranged weapons are here, which can also be upgraded for a price from your good friend Kit Kat. I found ranged was by far the easiest way to play, particularly when you consider most enemies use the close range attacks. So that little bit of extra room while you're still doing damage can be the key between winning and losing. When one of your furry friends takes a dirt nap, you'll be able to revive them if you can stand over their body for a short period of time, which works well enough I did feel that the death system was a touch harsher than you might expect. If you die on a quest, then you'll go all the way back to the start point where you first accepted it and then have to re-accept it again. This can become a touch tedious and restarting the same mission from the start of the dungeon area would have made more sense to me or at least having the option to do so. Missions themselves are of the fetch quest variety usually with a host of highlighted enemies hopping around you, which you must dispatch. It's a fun time for sure, and I enjoy the swift and responsive play. It just felt a touch safer than I was hoping for the sequel. Now that being said, this with my daughter, who's six, in local co-op was perfect, as she was able to quickly get to grips with the mechanics and play, dare I say it, better than me. Yeah. Dungeons are dotted around the map as well, 
with a handy indicator of the required or recommended level to tackle those. These areas usually include some environmental puzzling like dodging spike traps or killing enemies in a certain way, such as on those aforementioned spikes. Nothing brain bust in, but the combat can be quite challenging in these areas. Boss fights come in a few different flavors, from villainous rivals to dragons and everything in between. One of the best aspects of the game is the humor that they've infused into everything. Much of this is down to the visuals, but there's something quite intangible here as well, a quality that covers the whole thing. Everything just feels like it works well together. It's nice to have the slightly deeper character customization here, with items you pick up showing in a joint inventory, which was working well until we found a weapon that we both wanted and uh, a decision had to be made, based obviously on who was the oldest. Your roster of magical shenanigans has been improved and allows you to equip these to your shoulder buttons. The mana pool tends to drain a little too quickly early on, but items that improve this, both passively and actively, are welcomed additions. Overall then, gameplay is certainly a slight evolution rather than a total revolution, and sometimes that's exactly what the Doctor ordered. Just by adding the co-op elements and new weapons, they've done enough to breathe a touch of fresh air into an already fresh game. Not all is perf... I'm not... No, I'm not doing it. Not all's perfect though, I'm sorry. The death mechanic is just a touch annoying when on a quest. Also, the partner AI, if you're playing through in single mode, is a touch poor at times. It will run into enemy attacks and get itself knocked down more often than not. Controls are on point though. Again, I hope in the next game we can see more added here. Perhaps a lock-on mechanic and some more variety in terms of the way enemies attack. Overall for me though, I did enjoy gameplay, it scores a solid 16 out of 20, with those silky smooth controls getting 18 out of 20. Much like the wonderful Cuphead that used that incredible rubber hose in style from classic animations, the developers have nailed their chosen visual style. At times almost looking like hand-drawn cutout animation, everything in the world oozes quality, charisma and style. The bright and vibrant colours pop from the screen, but it's that frame rate that sets it all off gliding along an almost consistent 60 frames per second in both docked and handheld. Everything benefits from it. The character designs are fantastic. I love the little dog soldiers that you fight along your way. I actually felt quite bad for hitting them at times. The 17 piece original soundtrack is exactly what the visuals demand. Both lively and upbeat, but perhaps a tiny bit samey at times, with small detail sounds like the shrieks of cats and dogs when executing special moves, or the swipes of your blade, all do a good enough job at bringing everything together. The cutesy aesthetic won't work for everyone, and the animations are of a certain style. They have a touch of classic flash inverse kinematics about them, which doesn't bother me, and to my eye, looks great. As I mentioned, I think they've nailed the exact flavour they wanted to. While the occasional very minor performance dips can be forgiven, visuals overall score 18 out of 20, and the audio 17 out of 20. The game costs £12.99, €14.99 or $14.99, and I'd say that that price is absolutely right here. The game offers more than enough in terms of side distractions. You will feel like you're getting a quality product, and for fans of the original or even new players, there's enough to sink your canines into. I can't yet see a physical for Switch, but I'm sure it will come in time, as was the case with the first game. While not the longest experience, taking around 10 to 15 hours to 100% if you're a semi-competent player, it is very fun and great with or without a friend. Value for me scores 19 out of 20. I had hoped for a little more in terms of new ideas here, but bar a few new spells, weapons and the co-op mechanic, you've got the same exact experience, which judging by the reaction from the first game, isn't exactly a terrible thing. A very fun game that scores an overall switch up score of 88%. Thanks for watching the channel, as always we really do appreciate every single one of you. 
to our patrons for supporting us each month. Thanks to you guys. And if you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing. Let us know down in the comments if you'll be picking this game up. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!